This is the Dino X1500 portable power station and their 200 watt solar panel. Dino did provide this unit for me to review, but they weren't allowed any input on this video. I'm gonna tell you all the things I like about it and all the things I don't like about it. Let's get the specs out of the way. This is a 1500 watt solar generator with 1036 watt hours or roughly one kilowatt hour of battery capacity. And its marketing materials claim it can surge up to three kilowatts for one second. More on that in a minute. If you get the same kit that I did, you'll get the Dino X1500 portable power station, 200 watt solar panel, an AC power adapter, a DC power adapter or car charger, and the solar panel has the MC4 adapters, which then plug into a DC barrel adapter. The first thing I wanted to test was the solar panel. I wanted to test both the difficulty of setting this solar panel up as well as the output that I would get from the panel. I like the solar panel design. It reminds me of Anchor's solar panel design, which so far has been my favorite. This one has easy handles to carry. The bottom flares out a little bit so you can stand it up on its own if you just set it down. It's really not very heavy and it has three kickstands to firmly and securely face the solar panel toward the sun. It doesn't have those fancy double kickstands with the little angle bumps like the Anchor panels. So positioning it on a hard, smooth surface like concrete or pavers can be a little bit challenging, but it does have a nice pouch to keep all your solar panel cables nice and snug when you're transporting it. And of course, pretty much any design is better than the EcoFlow panel for quick setup and teardown. Personally, I saw the panel delivering up to 185 watts in less than ideal conditions. My other 200 watt panels were also getting 185 watts. So they're all the same in terms of output. The Dino panel has an open circuit voltage of 29.7 volts if you wanted to integrate this one into another solar array, but you can't use a bigger panel with the Dino 1500. Its max input is 200 watts. The solar panel also has four grommets on the edges of the panel in case you want to hang it up or attach it to something. The power station is pretty lightweight, particularly compared to some of the other units that I've reviewed so far. And it has nice spring-loaded handles that make it easy to carry, but then also recess into the power station when you put it down, so they take up less space. Perhaps the most impressive thing about this unit, though, is its 1500 watt inverter. It packs a huge punch for the price and how big the battery is. I would only expect it to have a 1000 watt inverter, but the marketing materials claim you can get three kilowatts of surge power for one second. So I tried powering up my 14,000 BTU portable air conditioner, which is rated at 1,250 watts, well below that 3,000. But it does surge up to 2.5 kilowatts when the compressor engages. This did cause the Dino X1500 to choke and the compressor never engaged. To be fair, the Anchor Powerhouse 767 also failed my air conditioner test and the Powerhouse starts at $2,000. The only unit I've tested so far that has successfully powered the air conditioner was the EcoFlow Delta Pro. You can also buy a soft starter, which has its own built-in capacitors to kind of handle those giant surges, but that's another $300 expense you'll need to consider. I don't have one, so leave a comment if you've got any experience with those things. I dialed my testing back a little bit and used the Dino X1500 to charge another power station, and I used all the lights in my studio at full power to dial in about 1700 watts. After a couple of seconds at 1700 watts, the Dino shut off and I was unable to turn it on again until I actually plugged it back into a charging power source. The solar panel would have worked for this, but it was dark and rainy outside while I filmed this segment. So let's dial it back a little bit further to what it was rated for, 1500 watts. After my last two tests, I'm a little bit skeptical that it will be able to maintain that 1500 watts. But to my surprise, this thing is confidently rocking 1500 watts all day long. That said, if you're going past 1500 watts, even for just a little bit, you might have some trouble, but below that threshold, this thing slaps. The cooling fan is temperature activated, so if a battery's getting hot, the fans turn on. It was pretty loud. All right, we're at a hundred percent now. I don't really like the fan noise, but that's a problem I have with most power stations. They're a bit whiny sounding, but they're necessary to keep these power stations operating safely. It's also not waterproof at all, so don't get your electronics wet. I also really like the wireless phone charging feature that's on top of the unit. It works as expected. You just need to make sure your phone is directly centered over the charging spot, and then you need to tap the DC and wireless button to activate it. This is great if you take it camping and someone forgets the charger. It also has two 100 watt USB-C ports, 
three 18 watt USB-A ports and a 12 volt 10 amp DC port, a 24 volt 5 amp DC port and a 12 volt 5 amp DC port and 320 volt AC outlets. One of the most underrated features is the light on the back though. It's very bright and it does have an SOS signal mode. This is great if you're stranded or it's dark and you need to attract attention. But of course the unit's a little big to be used as your everyday carry flashlight. On my last video, some people were asking about the inverter drain. And on this one, when you turn on the AC inverter, it doesn't actually tell you what the drain is. So I'm not really sure what the drain is, but I'm gonna leave this thing on all night and we'll see what it looks like in the morning. It's currently just about midnight. With all that in mind, the Dino X1500 is on Amazon right now for $700, which is 70 cents per watt hour of storage, which is pretty fair. For reference, the Anchor Powerhouse and the EcoFlow Delta Pro both start at $1 per watt hour of storage. And if you want their solar panel, it's $400. The AC power supply and the Dino solar panel are both 200 watt devices. So under ideal sunny conditions, you'd be charging the power station at the same rate with both the AC power supply and the solar, but they both use the same barrel adapter, so you can't use them at the same time. It also has the latest lithium iron phosphate battery and will charge from zero to 100% in roughly five hours on both AC or in full sun with the 200 watt solar panel. Dino has a two year warranty period Making videos is hard. All right, so on their website, it says that their warranty is two years, but if you check Amazon, it says their warranty is five years. So keep that in mind. They'll probably see this video and then update their website to say five years, but in the meantime, probably just buy it from Amazon. And a 30 day money back guarantee, but the warranty is non-transferable if you plan on reselling it. So keep that in mind if you frequently cycle up your tech purchases. The return shipping address is in a warehouse in Irwindale, California. I haven't actually heard of Dino's brand before I found their power station, but it seems like they came to the table with a very capable piece of equipment considering the size, weight, cost, and function. With the lower cost of this unit, you do sacrifice some of the fancy features you see on different brands of power stations, such as Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and app functionality, which you may have noticed are absent on this one. Also, if you run out of power, the inverter won't turn back on until you actually hit the button and turn it back on once it has a charge, so you can't just leave it in the sun and expect it to keep powering your devices if it ever runs out of power. It does need that manual. So if you don't need those features, this one might fit the bill. If you made it this far and you still have some questions, here is their product specifications and their little marketing chart with the highlights and the solar panel. If you want to pause it, zoom in, all that. There you go. That's my quick overview of the Dino X1500. So if you wanna get your own, there's links to where you can find these in the description of my video. And if you like power stations, make sure you're subscribed because I've got more in the studio already and I've got more on the way. We'll be talking about them for a little while. Thanks for watching, peace.